thank you very much. So I think a lot of people have heard of Julia Hub, right? You know, it's like, oh, those are the folks who are building Julia. Those are the folks building a lot of the Julia ecosystem. But what are they doing? You know, like what what is what is the company Julia Hub, right? So what I want to tell you about is this product that we have, which is Dyad. And the, the whole goal of Dyad is to be able to bring and bridge scientific machine learning from being something that is, you know, academic and fun research into something that's actually used in industry and changing real world environments. Um, you know, so the, the, the real goal with, with, with Dyad, right, is, is as you see in the race car there, is like, you know, to actually make scientific machine learning algorithms be running in machines, right, be running in, you know, race cars, be the thing building automotives, the thing that is actually running airplanes, you know, all those, all those pieces where you, you, you know that there's billions and billions of lines of software in every major device that you use today, but how do we make it so that way we, we, we change from the code that we're doing before, you know, the simplified model models that, that we have, you know, in, in, the, in the simplified controllers that are inefficient to something that is AI driven, scientific machine learning enabled with very high fidelity models that are then giving us much more efficient devices and much more efficient world. Right? You can think about it as, you know, what if you could just get an over the air update that changes your car suspension system so that way suddenly it becomes the most luxury class vehicle just because of a software change, right? This is the world that we're starting to live in and, Ju and Julia and, and what we're doing with Dyad is really powerful powering these software-defined machines. Um, and so what we're really focusing on is a space of system-level modeling, right? You might have heard of some tools like Medellica, tools like AIMSIM, right? This, this space of, of system-level modeling tools, we're really looking at this and, and asking the question, what can scientific machine learning and agentic AI and all these things that we've been building out in Julia, what, what can they do this do to the space, right? And so I think if a lot of people are not industrial engineers, I kind of want to show you what it looks like, you know, so that here's the dyad GUI in action. And you're, uh, you're bringing in a lot of these components and you're building up a model using a form called a causal modeling. Now, the reason why you do this instead of directly writing code is because as you get to these larger and larger real world models, you can't really feasibly write all the code from scratch, right? You want to be able to take someone else's model, like, you know, a, a model of, of a drive shaft that's been worked on for 10 years. And you want to take a model of a battery that's been worked on by another group for 10 years. And you want to just be able to say, hey, compose these two models together and generate a realistic simulation. Simulation, and now let me train controllers on this. Now let me generate the, the code that will go in the car based off of these models, right? So something where you want to be able to take tons and tons of work and, and build models uh, directly from, from pieces, the, these, these building blocks that are generated over time, and then do things like uh, analyses and, and tune auto control, uh, tune controllers and, and all that, right? And so Dyad is really about extending what we're doing with Julia all the way up to this space of industrial modeling where you get all of that code reuse and all that model reuse. And the way that we're doing this then is we're, we're doing this you know, building off of some ideas that people have had in the past, where, you know, there, there are these kind of builder tools, uh, graphical user interfaces, where you can take these component-based models and stitch them together. We're also doing something very different with something that we call Dyad Studio, where what we're doing there is we're integrating this entire modeling experience with graphical elements and with, with these, you know, these graphical features um, into the VS Code environment along with Agentic AI. And so what we're really doing then with this is we're, we're, we're pulling together all of what we're doing with scientific machine learning, right? The idea of, hey, let's build the most, you know, intense and, and accurate model of an HVAC system with all the two-phase flows and all the, every single piece that we can measure from, from reality. Let's build the most accurate model that we can. And now on that realistic model, let's bring the neural networks and the scientific machine learning. And now let's do the, uh, the generative AI techniques on top of that. So that way we have models that are continually improving their self, themselves. And let's actually put that out into the cloud and gives, and gives it's something so that way you can stream data from controllers uh, live inside of your chemical plant or inside of your wastewater plant. And so that way, as it's getting new data, it's actually updating the model. Like the model is a living object that is updating and continually improving our ability to be able to predict what's happening in the, on the ground. And we'll be able to better predict how air, whether airplanes are, you know, need maintenance, whether we need to, uh, what, you know, whether we need to maintain pipes inside of uh, wastewater facilities and all of these other aspects in the real world, then it kind of gets 
get this, this, you know, this idea of scientific machine learning is actually out there and deployed. Um, and I want to kind of show you what, what this is looking like in, in some of the recent uh, demonstrations. So we had one of our, um, one of our uh, industry experts, one of our, our modelers, uh, begin to use this, this agentic AI system where they're actually interacting with Dyad in a way that's fully through uh, English language text. Um, here they're actually giving it the commands for how to build a break signal. And they're look, being able to look at all the equations and say, okay, you know, but, uh, you know, here's the things that I need with the break. It needs to be able to model friction. Please find a friction, um, you know, uh, coefficients and everything from, from data. And as they're building up this model, it's not just giving them all the equations, but it's giving them the equations in a way that's component-based reusable. And it's actually going to show you then the model in this graphical form, right? So, so it's able to then build up and be able to say, hey, look, here's all the different things I have in this model. We have disk radiation. We have the ambient temperature connections. And now this is a piece that we can connect to other thermal models. And we can build out and then a whole entire model of a vehicle. And you, you just saw basically a, a vehicle model with, with friction and, and all these kind of uh, realistic elements uh, generated from, from scratch using a complete, you know, agentic workflow. So it's something then where you can see all these elements together, right? You have, you have code, you have, uh, you have graphics, you have the, the um, interactive, you know, you have code, you have graphics, you have the interactivity through the English language, natural language prompting, and you have all the graphical elements pieced together in a way that is able to be, so that way engineers can look at all of the different views of the object and, and try to understand, you know, have I built something that is really matching the real world? Um, you know, this is something that we can even invert as well. So here's a picture of a diagram from SCADE. If you don't know SCADE, it's one of these, uh, it's one of these in, uh, control theory environments that's used, for example, in a lot of the aerospace industry for, for the code that is actually running the controllers on planes. Um, and just to, just to show you, we, we, we took a picture, right? A picture of the diagram. Um, you know, one of these diagrammatic flows out of the graphical user interface. And then on the, on the side here, we told the AI, hey, you know, can you take this code and turn this into dyad? And so then we can directly do this translation from another, you know, not even just another language, it's just a picture, um, you know, a screenshot of the other language. And we've shown this in engineers before, and they asked this question of, oh, can we just like draw something on a board, like, you know, uh, build the idea of what we want on a whiteboard and take a picture and get the first version of our model and then start to iterate for it from there. And the idea is that, you know, th these tools are now enabling these completely new kind of workflows uh, that are then accelerating the way that we can get to realistic models that are then going all the way to code generation that are and running the controllers on real world devices. So this is what Dyad is all about, right? You know, it's it's bringing Julia from and and scientific machine learning from from these ideas of you know maybe scientific machine learning could be the future. Maybe scientific machine learning can give us you know better physical models. And this is now bringing it to the level where engineers who don't necessarily know how to do the deep programming and don't necessarily you know they're they're not the GPU engineers or anything, but they're they're the people who are building to tomorrow's HVAC systems and the next version of the air plane. This is then, Dyad is bringing all of this technology that we've been developing into these spaces so that way the next devices are built using Julia. So thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, questions? Maybe we'll have time for one or two questions. We have one, yes. Thank you for a nice talk. Um, um, in the uh, recent time, I heard many horror stories of using vibe coding to make AI agents um, uh, write uh, software uh, with, uh, with no manual review of the code. So I was just afraid that if you try to build the uh, spaceships and bridges, with the models you get from Dyad, where you um, uh, where you just prompt it, that there might be some horrible, some um, some fatal mistakes in those models. So, yeah. how do you ensure that such 
disaster don't happen? Yeah, that, that is a very good question, right? And, and so this is one of the reasons why dyad is a very different looking language than something like Julia, right? So, so what you can see here is that, you know, a dyad project is a project that has dyad code inside of what looks like a Julia package, right? It has a project uh, man, uh, and a manifest and everything, right? But dyad is a different language. Now, dyad compiles down to Julia, but it's a declarative language. And the reason why it's a declarative language and not imperative is because it allows us to be able to enforce and prove a lot more constraints, right? So it's something where you write down all these equations and then you can uh, and then it has things like you know units and it can ensure that for example all of your equations are unit correct it can ensure that you know all of uh, you know all your equations are unit correct that if any connections like you only have connections between mechanical units and mechanical units electrical units and electrical units and so there's a lot of static analysis and static checking such that it's very difficult to write models that are completely nonsensical right I mean of course you know you then need to make sure that you check the equations but there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of in, in interactions within the ag agentic behavior so that way it's getting feedback to say hey look you know the equation that you wrote down here is not unit correct so you need to you need to fix this and oh and, you know th this kind of type of equation is not a correct connector and there's so by, via the static in information you, if you actually watch the details of the agent it's going back and forth, forth and asking it what are even the possibilities that it can have here so all of this plus the ability to be able to not just always build uh, models from scratch but using uh, blocks from from pre-built libraries right so we ship with pre-built libraries for things like mechanical, uh, electrical, uh, and translational models, right? And by using these pre-built model libraries, you're stitching together things that have already been verified into new into new pieces, right? So, you know, it's like you're, you're not starting from nothing and you're not writing imperative code, you know, a Turing complete machine that can do anything. You're in a restricted environment where you have pre-built, you know, and verified models that are then have, that, that have to then satisfy a lot of, sci you know, scientific and physical laws and, they're, and the static checking is then enforcing that as part of the system. And under those constraints, we then find agentic AI does actually work well, right? So it's a very different use case of it that's, that's forcing the AI to have to be a lot more correct. Um, so, yeah, very good question. Okay. okay. One last quick question. Did you say, is Dyad Turing complete or not? Dyad is not Turing complete. It is a declarative modeling language and it's an equation based modeling language. So you write equations and then it's able to generate what the, di what the differential equations and underlying uh, con synchronous compiler system is able to do and it's able to compile that um, to, to runnable code. But you don't get to actually you know, write loops or any of the, these aspects, right? You're, it's, a, it's a much higher level language specifically for describing physical systems. Wow. A non Turing complete language. That's cool. Crazy. Delightful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, everyone's throwing AI and everything and being like, oh, you know, AI can, yeah, how do I know it solves a halting problem? Well, that's an issue with the uh, Turing complete languages, right? So. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Chris.